CSSC details claim that the new class will weigh between 90,000 and 100,000 tons and have an electromagnetically assisted launch system catapult or emuls to eject the aircraft from deck. It will likely carry the large air wings of the J-15 fighter, J-31 stealth fighter, KJ-600 airborne early warning and control aircraft, anti-submarine warfare helicopter, and stealth attack drones. China's nuclear-powered carriers, partnered with Type 055 cruisers and next-generation submarines, will have the potential to become a formidable force for global missions. The specifications put China's planned nuclear carrier on par with current U.S. carriers, at least on paper. The report also cites an article by Popular Science that mentions a CSSC leak that appears to indicate a clone of China's planned nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, tentatively dubbed Type 003. China aims to build a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier to protect its growing strategic interests overseas, the latest flexion of Beijing's growing naval power and influence. This month, China reported that analysts believe China's follow-up to the recent successful launch of the aircraft carrier Fujian may be nuclear-powered, with some notes the China State Shipbuilding Corporation has stated that it should achieve a breakthrough in nuclear-powered technology by 2027. An article in Wave of South China Sea, the military affairs social media account, stated that the shipyard responsible for China's aircraft carrier had not been given the necessary permits and was unsure whether China could acquire the technology to build a nuclear power plant. Operator. He also stated that diesel-powered vessels would better suit China's needs. This is not the first time China has voiced its ambition to build a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. This may. Asia Times reported that in February 2018 CSSC began developing a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier that would assist the PLA Navy by 2025. Reports suggest that China has completed design work for its fourth aircraft carrier, expected between 2025 and 2027. However, military sources to date have stated that the ship will be conventionally powered. Port notes that conventional carriers require less maintenance and are cheaper to build than their nuclear-powered counterparts. However, nuclear power is more suitable for catapult-equipped aircraft carriers such as Fujian, as their reactors provide the ship with practically unlimited range and generate steam to power the catapults. Fujian is China's first aircraft carrier to feature the Imel's electromagnetic launch system, which uses powerful electromagnets rather than steam catapults to launch aircraft. Imel's is said to be gentler on the fuselage, potentially reducing maintenance downtime and increasing service life and allowing Fujian to launch fighters that carry more fuel and weapons or heavier aircraft types. So far, only the US and France operate nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, with the US using the Nimitz and Ford classes and France using the Charles de Gaulle. Malcolm Davis, a senior security analyst with the Canberra-based Australian Strategic Policy Institute, argues that China's next aircraft carrier will be nuclear-powered, noting two main reasons. First. Davis noted that nuclear-powered aircraft carriers match China's ambitions to have a world-class navy with long-range power projection capabilities, reducing the need for forward bases and additional ships. Second, Davis said that nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are considered a prestige asset, which if acquired would strengthen China's image as a global superpower. Brad Martin, a senior policy researcher at RAND, concurs that China's next aircraft carrier will probably be nuclear-powered noting that the Imol's technology used with Fujian requires a large amount of energy that conventionally powered carriers find difficult to provide. Martin also noted that China was already operating nuclear-powered submarines and that a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier seemed likely to be the next logical step. China's global ambitions are reflected in its maritime Silk Road, a network of Chinese leased or funded ports that stretches from Europe to Asia. The network serves as a China-based maritime trade route that may require long-range power projection capabilities to secure, with nuclear-powered aircraft carriers compliant with capability requirements. Ver, as previously noted by Asia Times, aircraft carriers may be an overly capable and expensive asset for a relatively tedious mission like escorting a convoy of merchants. In addition, avoiding the risk of losing an aircraft carrier in combat operations could relegate a Chinese carrier to a political asset to demonstrate its immense power status. Since the end of World War II, the US has only operated aircraft carriers in a permissive environment against adversaries who have no means of fighting for control of the seas. However, Chinese carriers will face a very different area of operation. The New York Times reported this month that the US is aiming to turn Taiwan into a giant arms depot as part of its hedgehog strategy. The strategy, the report says, involves multiple but highly mobile, 
dispersed and survivable weapons such as anti-ship missiles, portable air defense systems, man pads, sea mines and surface-to-air missiles SAMs, that can defend against Chinese attacks. The initial attack, and inflicted heavy casualties on the invading forces while putting the precious Chinese aircraft carrier in jeopardy. The US has substantial capabilities to break China's potential blockade of Taiwan. This month, the Nikkei quoted Admiral Samuel Paparo, commander of the US Pacific Fleet, as saying the US could break China's blockade of Taiwan, referring to America's nuclear submarine fleet and other underwater warfare capabilities. In such a Taiwan scenario, carrier battle groups from China's North Sea Fleet, East Sea Fleet, and South Sea Fleet would conduct flanking maneuvers in the Miyako Strait, Taiwan Strait and Bashi Strait to enforce the blockade of Taiwan. In one sense, analysts believe conventional carriers would better suit China's needs in the conflict in Taiwan because of their close proximity. Even so, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier would still be a strong asset for China if it decided to build such a warship. In particular, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers can reduce the need to stop operations for refueling and resupply, increase the rate of surprise attacks by Chinese warplanes and strengthen China's blockade of Taiwan compared to conventionally-powered ships by providing a persistent presence.